What's going on, YouTube? Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Um, I've got a trombone talks with Nathan uh, blog style here, so I've got some uh, some subjects I want to bring up, and um, these videos are mostly things that I learned over the weekend. I'm I'm trying to make these more of a consistent thing that I do. Um, so these are some things that I learned over the weekend um, as a freelance musician and music teacher. This is mostly from my freelance career, though. So um, something that I learned this weekend is that um, you want to be careful with what people recommend to you gear-wise. Um, a lot of people love to put out their opinion on oh, I think this is the best mouthpiece, or I think this is the best, you know, brand trombone that that you should play. And sometimes these opinions can be very valid, but <clears throat> something that as brass players we have to remember is that everyone is going to be different. I might pick up a horn or a mouthpiece, and it feels amazing, and I hand it over to a buddy of mine, and he says, oh, this is, this is garbage. Um... So you want to be careful with these things. Um, and something that I learned was um, I, I have two mouthpieces I use with my small bore tenor. One is a Marcinkowitz um, Custom, which is like around an 11C. And then the other one I play is um, a Deniswick uh, 6. Uh, I forgot the initials, but it's kind of like a 6.5 AL, but for a Deniswick. And... Um, you know, I, I've been playing a lot of these um, salsa gigs, and that's mostly what I'll be talking about. And um, I've been, I've kind of classified these mouthpieces, one of them as my lead slash commercial mouthpiece, and then my other one as my jazz and section mouthpiece. And the reason I did this is because, you know, I had someone point out to me that, you know, they thought that this specific mouthpiece fit this specific genre so i've been you know i i kind of took that with a grain of salt but i did i did try it to see for myself so for a couple of weeks i believe i've been using that mouthpiece and this weekend um i i tried the dennis wick because i'm at that point where i know this book very well that i know this book so well that i am able to do that and try it so I tried the, the Dennis Wick, and I noticed that um, everything felt and sounded good um, to, to my standards. I could immediately pick up that mouthpiece, and boom, all the registers spoke, everything was clear, everything was concise, and everything just in general felt a little more comfortable to me. Um, so, you know, in the, these categories I make, they're, they're subjective, so not everything is always going to work like that. But just remember that, you know, when you have people telling you, oh, you know, you should be on this mouthpiece, da 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 um, that the, the best judge at the end of the day is going to be you of what, what feels best to you. So something I found out was that with the Dennis Wick, um, I could sound a little more like myself and everything just spoke more comfortably and felt more comfortably. Um, next thing I want to talk about is um, self-care equals a good gig. Um, if you are tired and hungry and stressed and sore, um, those are things that you are going to take with you onto the stage or onto the bandstand. And sometimes the group will be affected by this because your playing will be affected by this. I know personally, if I haven't gotten enough sleep or maybe I skipped a meal or I didn't stretch or do all these fundamental things that I do every time I play a gig, I'm seriously affected by them. Um, so just remember that when you're, when you're playing gigs, not only do you have to do things, you know, on the horn that are going to be beneficial towards the gig, your body is just as much a part of you playing the instrument as the instrument is itself. Because you are the one playing the instrument and commanding the instrument and making music with the instrument. 
And I noticed when I'm tired, there are some things in my playing that will usually start to pop up. Um, endurance goes low. Sometimes even my air can be affected by this. Um, I've got a little bit of asthma, so making sure I, you know, take my inhaler and all that stuff. So remember that taking care of yourself is just as important in your routine as your warm up. If not, even sometimes these things are more important. Um, and a uh, third thing I learned, learned this weekend is that um, playing louder is not always the solution if someone asks you to play louder. For example, there was a band I was playing with and they wanted more trombone. Um, and, you know, in my opinion, I thought my volume was fine. I thought I'm playing with a mic. The monitors sound great. I think that I think I blended with the, the band very good. So instead of playing louder, I actually tried matching more of the articulation. And this specific style that I'm talking about is salsa, cumbia, and Latin music. So sometimes I would play things a little more blandly that, than it should be. And this is because I'm classically trained and, and a jazz musician. And sometimes these other styles of music demand a different set of skills that you need to use. So in my head, playing louder was not the solution. So I tried working on my articulations. I kept, the, I kept the volume the same, but the way I would attack notes and the way I would phrase notes made it so that it blended with the section and the genre of music much better. And then the, the of course the band leader then said, you know, oh that, you know, that sounds great, so much better. Um, I didn't even change the volume. I, I changed the articulation. So remember that if something is requested upon you, um, be careful with how you respond because if I had played louder, maybe that would be the solution. But then I'm tuckering myself out and I'm putting in more work for, for a four hour gig. So remember that articulation is very, very important, it, not just in this genre of music, but other genres of music as well. Um, okay, that's my third note. Fourth one. Um, sometimes. And now this is this is a, a very me thing. Sometimes when I'm done with a gig, I feel a little unvalued or feel like I wasn't really part of the, the picture of the band because I'm just a trombone player. And I don't know where this mindset came from. I don't know if it's from marching band. And, you know, when I was a marching man, there were over 250 kids in the marching band. And I just kind of felt like another voice. And... I, I kind of, you know, start to fish for compliments, like when someone would say, oh, the group sounded really good. No one's really going to point out, oh, yeah, you know, that that trombone player was amazing. Hey, maybe every now and then you might get something like that. But remembering that with, with compliments, although it can be nice to hear, sometimes you have to hear it in, in different words that work for yourself. What does that look like? Let's say you played a gig and you felt like you did a really, really great job with it, but no one comes up to you and says, I think that you did a really great job. That's not always going to happen. Like I said, maybe it'll happen sometimes, but not a lot. Um, the compliment you're going to hear a lot is, wow, the group or the band or the orchestra is a collective. Oh, they sounded really good. Now, remember, when this compliment comes out as, oh, they sounded really good, you are a part of that. So when someone says, hey man, the band sounded really great, that also entails that you are part of the band. And that's something we have to remember and cherish. And sometimes I get a little negative like that. Um, and if anyone else is like me, just remember that when you get that compliment of the group that you are playing in, the orchestra you're playing in, the band that you are playing in, that they sound good, you are part of that collective sound. So a little piece, a uh, little tidbit for you. Um, another thing um, I learned was, uh, this is kind of a gear thing, but I don't remember when I started doing this, maybe a couple months ago. Instead of wearing earplugs, I've been wearing these gun range headphones, and what it looks like is, um, I'm talking about salsa music, this kind of applies to some, uh, some other you know, genres of music as well. There are a lot of songs where I do not play. So what I've been doing is on the songs I don't play, I wear these, and then on the songs I do play, I take them off. One of the reasons is because of 
earplugs. Sometimes earplugs drive me a little bit nuts. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so I've been doing this for a while. And I, I started to notice that they weren't as effective as the earplugs, as great as the are, these are. Now, these plus the earplugs are a great combination. But um, one of the cons of these is you kind of look terrible on stage. You have a, a really bad stage presence when you wear these things. I kind of look like an airline pilot. Now, um, something I did this weekend was I got rid of these. And I switched to earplugs. I don't think I have any with me, but, um, you know, normal musician earplugs. There are lots out there, um, and most of them work pretty well. And hearing protection is really important because when you get to a certain decibel level, and if you play commercial music, you'll notice this, they get louder and louder progressively through the night. So it's very important to protect your ears. Even, you know, at the beginning of the game, you might go, oh, oh, you know, this, this, this isn't too bad. It will get worse as the gig goes on. Anytime you're playing with electronic instruments, like a rhythm section, I don't know why, but things always tend to get louder the more the gig goes on. Um, and something that's going to help a lot is to wear earplugs. Now I'm talking about earplugs versus these. Um, I think in the end, the earplugs are going to win, mostly because the earplugs are just a little bit more... Um, practical they you put them in your ears and, and then that's it with the, with these things you know and i don't see a lot of musicians using these i might be the only one but like i said this is just you know for me if anyone else ends up you know trying these um the the earplugs are going to be much better um when you get to a certain decibel level and you're not wearing earplugs you can start to cause permanent hearing damage so it's very important to protect your ears and one of the things that I don't like about earplugs is that, you know, you can even do this test at home. If you plug your ears and you talk, you are going to sound really loud. So something that I tried, well, be, before I tried this, I would always be scared to wear earplugs because I'm afraid I'm playing too loud. So something I did over the weekend was the first two songs, I took the earplugs out. And I adjusted my monitors so that I got the feedback, making sure, okay, th when, I'm, when I'm playing this loud, this is what the sensation feels like. This is what it feels like to play with the, the other players. And I remember that feeling. I put the earplugs in, and then I just played how, how I usually play. When before, I'd put the earplugs in right at the beginning of the gig, and then I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm playing too loud. Um... And it's just something I had to get used to. But I noticed by the end of the weekend, because I played about three gigs this weekend, by the end of the weekend, I kind of had it down to a science. So I think the earplugs are, are going to win win over that. Um, a fifth thing is not really advice. It's a, a life update for me. I am now um, full-time in music. Now, I know that might sound surprising to some of you. You see I'm posting all these videos going, man, that guy's busy. Um, it's taken me many, many years to get to the point where I have filled every single day in my week with something that is music related, whether that be freelance work, private lessons, or teaching band. Um, this is a really big milestone for me because I've been trying so long to fill up my weeks to um, just be doing what I love, uh, bringing my income up a little bit. You know, lots lots of pros to this. And I can finally say after many, many years of hard hard work and dedication, that I am now a full-time musician. Now I'm not playing full-time, but I am doing all music things full-time, which is a, a huge blessing. I'm very thankful for it. Um, that was my blog for today, Trombone Talks with Nathan. Um, if you want any lessons with me, there's a link down below, check it out. I still have a couple of openings that I'm trying to fill. Um, hit that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Keep practicing, keep playing your instruments, and have a great day, everyone.